a very warm good morning to one and all present here taking part in this third day of seven day faculty development program fdp i am shweta singh and it is my great pleasure to host this seven day international faculty development program honorable chief patron mr manish kumar kapsime chairman grizzly college of education honorable patron mr avinash kumar said secretary grizzly college of education honorable patron dr sanjita kumari deputy director grizzly college of education honorable and honorable speaker professor dr mumtaz begum from pondicherry university and honorable convener professor dr b c swain sir principal grizzly college of education i grizzly college of education welcome the teacher educators principal teachers and participants from all over the globe in the 7 day faculty development program on teaching pedagogy recent trends in teaching learning process Grizzly College of Education was founded with the visionary and the wise guidance of the honorable Mr Avinash Kumar Seet and honorable Mr Manish Kumar Kapsime to provide quality teacher education the college was recently accredited by the NAC under the supervision of honorable deputy director ma'am Dr Sanjita Kumari and pay my gratitude with to her excellent performance Now I would like to request honorable convener principal professor Dr B C Swain to welcome the dignitary Good morning to all those participating in this international faculty development program esteemed chief patron mr manish kumar kapsine esteemed patron mr avinash kumar seth esteemed patron dr sanjita kumari deputy director digital college of education esteemed professor mamtaz begum i welcome all the participants from india and abroad on behalf of the organizing committee of this international faculty development program on teaching pedagogy recent trend in teaching learning process grizzly college of education is an institute of refuge established under the visionary and prolific guidance of mr avinash kumar seth and mr manish kumar kapsine which has been implemented quality teacher education since 2009 it is it is my great opportunity to introduce honorable professor mamtaz begum dean and head school of education pondicherry university pondicherry she received many prestigious award recipient of the prestigious commonwealth academic fellowship 2013 from the commonwealth scholarship commission of the uk associate ship are the indian institute of advanced studies iias shimla a joint initiative of university grant commission iuc and iias professor begum an eminent educationist well known in academic professional and research circle is currently as professor at pondicherry university school of education pondicherry she was the head of the school of education at the tamil nadu open university being a keen researcher she has specialized in the area of quality issues in education open the distance learning vocational education neuro linguistic program special education women's education etc she has guided several research scholar enabling them to acquire post graduate and highest order research qualifications 
from various Indian universities. For her untiring service to the profession of teaching, she was crowned with the best teacher award twice. She stood first in the MPhil examination of a Madras University and earned the general proficiency award for the best outgoing MED student. She is, she is a visiting faculty and a panelist in the Advanced Research Committee of Higher Learning Center. She is the principal coordinator for Erasmus program of the European Union title CLIL India and coordinator of the Ministry of Education Government of India sponsored program title PMMMNPTT. -T -T. She has traveled widely in the Far East, Middle East and European, European countries for presenting research paper and to attend executive board meets. She made her presence felt in many international and national conference as chairperson and also presented technical paper on wide range of themes, some of which were declared as best paper. She has published book in the wider discipline of education and some of her books are the course, courses, course material for the universities. She is a voracious reader, versatile writer and lady with manner who can blend in with it any culture, it is because of you, ma'am, that the faculty development program will receive a different status. Thank you so much for your gracious presence, madam. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your enthusiastic welcome. And really, ma'am, uh, uh, ma'am, we. I think there is some technical problem due to some technical problem, ma'am. Uh, ma'am left the meeting. Uh, we are trying to connect with her. So I'm going to proceed. So today's seven day faculty development of program on teaching pedagogy recent trends. We, the members of Grizzly College of Education are delighted and honored to conduct this event, which is very urgent need of the day. Our Grizzly College of Education aims in developing and promoting a responsive and relevant research program for higher education, communicators, and contributing us excellence in multidisciplinary areas as innovative and resourceful center. I think that seven-day faculty development program is the most important thing because it is the teacher who faces a type of student and messages. The teacher has a part and the qualities. Apart from the qualities, apart from the academic discipline, it is the teacher who gives out to the student. So unless there is a skillful teacher, unless we have a good quality teacher, unless the teachers are well qualified, they have well known about subjects, it is very difficult to kindle the patience in the students. And one of the most important things a teacher should understand that every student is a receptible. Is a receptible. So the young mind which come, the faculty should utilize the potential that is 
the minds of the students so to upgrade and enrich the profession more skillfully and to make ourselves more successful this fdp is the most absolute necessity of today's day and age and i think this young minds are the teachers and would be the teachers who is attending this faculty development program fdp would be initially benefited still the ma'am has not joined i think there is technical issues sorry for uh, we are very sorry for the technical issues sorry for the inconvenience we are trying to connect with her and after that we will proceed shortly she will be with us still we are trying to connect with her I think there is some technical issues. Okay, so I am uh, proceeding towards faculty development program. faculty development program fdp aims at equipping teachers with skills and knowledge that are essential for inculcating professional values in students and guiding and monitoring their pro progress towards professional career it aims to focus on different modes of approach in order to meet the professional challenges of life in order to become not merely a trained professional but also a better citizen fdp helps the capacity enrichment and continuous knowledge upgradation training program for people working in different capacities and roles the program build research training and administration competence for holistic development of teachers the grizzly college of education always takes initiative and enhances their ability of faculty faculty development should be the heart of any higher institution in order to foster a productive culture so the third day's topic is modern trend in education flipped classroom learning still ma'am has not connected with us i think we is facing some technical issues let's wait for her
we will connect shortly we are very sorry uh, ma'am is not i think ma'am is facing technical problem and she is not able to connect with us so we are very sorry uh, for today sorry for the inconvenience um, ma'am is not able to connect with us
sorry for the in inconvenience uh, we are not able to connect with us uh, yesterday's smile sir have connected with us malaysia teacher and he have uh, talked about many things regarding uh, faculty development program fdp um, about uh, he talked about vuca models of effective lead teaching teaching pedagogy and technology he all he talked about creativity and inno innovations creativity is thinking up new things innovation is doing new things ability to take existing objects and combining them in different ways for the new purposes this is the sir has gave the beautiful message to all the faculty that creativity and application and creativity gives the gives the birth of innovation so many examples sir have explained about uh, reshaping interpretation associations and sir has also talked about uh, yesterday effective learning and teaching requirement solution to vuca world so that was uh, for uh, that which sir have talked about talked yesterday really this uh, uh, still ma'am has not uh, i think she is facing technical issue okay i am taking uh, the comments um dr vibhuti bhushan dhar from principal jalangi bed college murshibad um uh, saying the uh, welcome sir in this uh seven day faculty development program thank you for joining us and thanks for your support and uh, you liked my speech uh thanks a lot it means a lot for we are still trying to connect with her ये बंद 
We are very sorry for the inconvenience of for today due to technical interruptions Mumtaz Begum could not able to join with us in the 7 days faculty development program so we are going to delay this program um, so we are ending the session and we will continue tomorrow okay so thank you for today Okay, okay ma'am have connected with us. Uh, okay, so we are not ending the session. Ma'am have connected okay. at the last moment. We have joined. Oh, due to technical, uh, we can understand, ma'am, that due to technical. Yeah. Am I visible and audible now? Yes, ma'am. You yes. are visible and you are audible. Now shall we continue? Yes, ma'am. Now shall we continue? Yes. It is shall my great honor. Yes, ma'am. We we shall continue. It is my great honor to invite honorable guest yeah. professor Mumtaz Begum, Dean and Head School of Education, Pondicherry University. So please, ma'am, over to you now. Please proceed. Yes. Ma'am, you are not. I'm so sorry. The technology is not uh, helping us. That's the reason. Uh, anyway, uh, it's my proud privilege to address this gathering uh, for this uh, FDP. Uh, this is on teaching method pedagogy, uh, recent trends in teaching learning process. Uh, by the yes, way, I need a change uh, in my designation. I have given in my uh, slide also the former dean because uh, now my deanship got over. Mm -hmm. So now I am with, uh, uh, I mean, I'm professor and former dean. Okay. Now my presentation just starts like this. Uh, we are trying to understand each other. Like uh, maybe I'm a senior person with uh, uh, some, ex uh, I mean, good exposure over teaching. And I'm here to uh, correlate my experiences along with you. So I'm asking today, who are you, the participants, and why are we all here? We are we have gathered for some information sharing, and uh, like, uh, what do you expect from me uh, through this FDP Faculty Development Program? Is it a refocus back to why we are teachers? Uh, we have to think why we have become teachers, or uh, is there any reason that um, I mean I am not a teacher? by foes I have come, something like that. We may have a, 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 some feeling. Please uh, get away with that feeling. We are teachers here. And what is happening in the educational world today, like around us? Today, what's happening? All changes, all innovations, and uh, different strategies we have just to change over. And uh, how do we get there? This is what my presentation concentrates on. So we, I start this conversation, but uh, that uh, targeting the comfort zone, uh, it is to reach out 
in a classroom to all of our students not just the smart ones only with those people who are um, select to the smart ones so we need to continuously find venues different alternatives to address and often a variety that can reach all different types of students because in a class we can have above average average and below average or extraordinary uh, ordinary and uh, below ordinary students so we have to cater to the needs of all these three types that's what we mean all different types of students and this can be extremely challenging and pushes us as educators so we feel that yes we are teachers when we are going to address the needs of diversified learners in our classrooms and outside our com uh, outside our comfort zone we come out and then we feel that it has to be done because education act you teach it today is not working simply teachers no simply lecturing no you have to demonstrate you have to interact you have to construct you have to be a mentor that is what i expect from this uh, presentation and uh, i am just uh, calling forth uh, the evolution of our student group uh, so who are our students like uh, i am just uh, calling way back to 1946 um, though we were all not born even i wasn't born that time so it is like uh, who are our students the baby boomers those days it is growing up in a time of economic expansion the world as such we were trying to grow uh, with prosperity and major social movements have taken place especially in our country all the social movements and that national optimism so we expect something good for our nation that's what national optimism that is the first evolution which i am thinking as a student group the second group we can call it as generation x that is the first uh, people who are what happened ma'am ma'am you are not audible now on between ma'am you are not audible hello ma'am 1965 ma to 19 uh, seven witness ma'am your voice is breaking ma'am you are not audible got the off very all almost like uh, the education sector is on a carpet um, lot of corruption patient uh, there's an energy crisis and new year proliferation that is our uh, uh, whatever um, the day uh, little uh, from peace to little uh, peaceless uh, and uh, no peace at all these days and uh, now i'm yes okay i'm continuing are you all hearing we were the future were not same this way we had we were growing involved more anything you want to say can i continue to yes i'm continuing and can you just say yes to me yes ma'am yeah okay then fine so the next generation is next so with the um, these people like uh, i as i said i, I was also born in this um, um, year gap that is the they witnessed the corporate layoffs uh, corruption inflation all these things i don't want again now i'm coming to 
the core values of this we there this time we had more diversity to balance with each other and it is a uh, that period we started the techno literacy and we had lot of fun along with education we had entertainment so combined together we had started learning informally also not only formal it is through informal sources also we tried to learn and we were self reliant and we were more with pragmatism that i can do this better than so that's what is pragmatism it is thinking beyond we call that as meta uh, cognition or pragmatism and uh, the next uh, age group is y generation y who were born between 1977 to 2000 before 2000 okay so these people they they grew up being de defined citizen and they were raised in a uh, child focused environment like very much petted and patted we were together but at the same time we were uh, given much focus on so the core values included optimism again civic duty so we are trying to perform certain duties higher and we were trying to become sociable enough we were moving with the, uh, everyone and it is the morality now that the question of morality comes the values the ethics uh, like uh, we should not hinder others lives or we should not disturb or we should prove worthy of oneself it is like um, street smarts like we try to become the smartest of all we suppose one group is there one tries to uh, i mean give away the smart uh, uh, i mean whatever opinions or ideas something like that so trying to match the diversified needs the last generation generation is it now where we are all uh, now meeting it is born after 2000 and uh, now till present that is even 1990s also can include these people grew up with internet so without internet we cannot just go ahead now it isn't it so without a mobile those days it was a family phone one landline only now with cell phones in our hands ipads ipods uh, and all information with fast and uh, it, uh, we expect it very quickly anything to happen globally from here i can contact my australian friend or any other friend uh, Uh, through middle east whatever it is so quick the um, information passes and we often are seen as impatient and techno savvy just uh, some 10 minutes ago we were i was very much impatient oh what happened to my uh, laptop or what happened to my mobile if i am not able because i prepared this for say so many days together i was longing to meet you in fact uh, this techno people if you meet in person then we will know how much difficult we have taken it is one to one interaction we will, we will come forth with a lot of uh, ideas mutually shared and care so uh, actually because of this uh, after the especially after the corona period uh, we are all meeting online only on the virtual platforms and with our techno survey uh, knowledge or skill in our hand so the core values here are sense of social justice we have to prove worthy of social justice we have to uh, just match with uh, everyone's uh, uh, ideology that is what is social justice and philanthropy and maturity so that idea uh, fill is love for people now for just after your maturity level grows you have to grow also along with the world that comes with growing up in an economically depressed time now our economic status is not that good worldwide not only in india everywhere the global arena facing uh, economically depressed time this is what is uh, given by um, i mean uh, from the person uh, by name professor chris whom i will be mentioning later uh chris professor chris belong to us who who as the proponent of this uh, flipped classrooms okay so the recent trend is flipped classroom but even that has lost its charm because now we are growing 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 and uh, 
I don't know where we are going to end only. And this flip classroom is not, not a fixed one. Hmm? But one of many methods. So there are different alternative methods of teaching. This is also one of the methods. And, and they are used to encourage an active learning environment. So it is like very brisk, very active, very dynamic, very energetic. We have to be in the learning environment. Here, one thing I would like to mention, learning environment not only means for students, it is for the teachers also. We also have to become learners. We have to listen to the audience what they are saying. It's a mutual care, learn, interact, information sharing. Okay, not not from one end only, like passive listening. No, it is active learning also. Listen to their needs. We looked at it is change. Um, it is like um, the change is from within, not from outside. So it is like not one step also. You have to take many steps to change. You keep on changing yourself as the globe changes. Globally, the changes are uh, there. And similarly, you have to look for your changes also. So when I'm saying, where are we today in India as an education system? Now I'm bringing that flipped classroom to the Indian situation from Professor Chris to Professor Mumtaz here. Okay. Now we have fallen behind. So it is imperative that we change despite what others think. Don't ever think, uh, feel that, oh, the other person may think badly or the other person may have some other opinion. Ne Never give importance to others' opinion. You have to train your mind. You have to train yourself that you are attending to the needs of the learners. Okay. Now, uh, let me go in for uh, more information on this side. So it is like the question answer session we have given. So in very ordinary terms, that's what I, I meant, blunter terms. Some have asked, what makes us successful business people? Suppose if a businessman is interviewed and um, uh, an interview is being held and we are What is the uh, uh, success of that businessman? Even if they are successful at business, qualified, are they qualified on the operation of university, universities? Like uh, the university may say, no, he is not qualified. He doesn't even have a post-graduation. He doesn't even become a graduate, but still is able to become a very successful businessman. How is it possible? This is what he's going along with the chain. He's going along with the paradigm shift of the globe. So here the answer is well, obviously anything that has to do with the universities is going to be figured out by people who have worked in universities and is going to be uh, piloted in universities. Only for people who are in universities, we think we need to be graduated, post-graduated, have research degrees, all these are in our mind, but, but for others, the business people, they only concern. And uh, I don't think 
there's any business people who are just walking out of their office door and walking over to a university and saying hi reorganize your university this way i have never heard of that so business people are not bothered whether the university is functioning or not the education system is working out or not they are least bothered they are only concentrating on their own business this is what is the difference i mean to say and the second question which i am post posing to you also it is like some of us what makes successful business people if they are qualified if they are not qualified so what is the answer alternatively i am giving the answer is what we do is we fund universities who are on the cutting edge so these business people say i because of my business i've earned a lot i've got enough funds would you like to have yes by endowment sir they create they fund us so business people alternatively are trying to help us out and so it's people from universities who apply so i'm also applying for some fellowship some grant something and uh, say yeah, i want to do this next generation learning we call that as like i want to research i want to go as a, a number one researcher it's called next gen learn i'm trying to do something for the next generation so they can because you need the people doing the i mean need content and uh, next con content and the people who actually sit with the students and and motivate the students and help them when they are confused so we teachers have to motivate the students we have to become the true mentors and facilitators we should not say oh why you need my i mean guidance or why you listener and you act accordingly you write the exam you get a pass no that's not the way you have to teach in the class you have to adopt the innovative strategy and you call uh, you are uh, you say that uh, uh, during their confused status you are not to become confused rather uh, you have to give them help them with the labs or you need those elements to come together make them uh, a confidentially coming along with you that that sort of uh, compatibility you have to give they have to be, i mean feel as if they are coming along with you then alone you will be a successful teacher then alone you are called as a teacher uh, i deny the chance if you are not assume gives a chance for you to become compatible teacher an adjusting teacher a motivating teacher an innovative teacher so the basic principles of flip classrooms what is traditionally done in the class is now done at home also even at home from home uh, i mean it is like work from home teach from home learn from home this is what our, um, i mean the recent trends since 2000 Uh, 19 onwards, we have started doing this very rigorously. We sit at home before a system, and we try to engage our learning uh, totally in that situation, in that atmosphere. That is what the change we have adopted. To. And uh, it is like, but here it is no, no, not that simple because uh, here there is no cooperative learning. People learn. independently but they are not sharing their knowledge or, or any knowledge not shared that is not been tested or properly uh, like certified knowledge i i am doing something who is to test me who is to certify me the teacher may have time to go through it or may not but the student 
friends your peers the student peers will definitely say hey this is wrong this is right that is what we mean by cooperative learning that's one step ahead of constructivistic thinking so is not that simple it is little more elaborate as i thought i mean to say it is a well thought out before using you have to just think chart out the method design properly and then go for implementing this process of flip classroom it uses both summative and formative assign assessment you know what is formative summative assessment summative is that sum is is cm sum is total formative is throughout like after you to undertake one lesson for about uh, two days then afterwards you undergo some testing that is what formative testing formative assessment after you become a master over that knowledge you take up another set of the uh, subsequent uh, lessons so that you learn and you keep on testing yourself first the teacher must test then you have to give that technology to your students and the students will um, i mean uh, just work out uh, test for themselves then they will submit it for summative uh, assessment to us as teachers it is our bounden duty to look into the students needs throughout that is not at one point it is from beginning till the end and throughout also uh, through the phase it is in a uh, process then output phase we have to just look for and then give a formative assessment no it has to have its own time testing uh, that's what we say it is a uh, le learning is something like at at its own pace and speed and at its environment the learning environment is now the flipped classroom environment that's a magic environment that you create for your students now i am giving this uh, ctl blog it is uh, um, uh, i mean given by chris faulkner he is the proponent of this uh, uh, a flip classroom while uh, he says while i'm glad many educators seem to be jumping on board with the model my concerns are that some teachers may simply transfer their lectures to be you and then in a other student so i prepare something on my video i tell okay go uh, i mean here, listen to that audio and learn on your own and they write the paper or fill out worksheets during the class but to me this is very bad and not even having patience to look into their needs whether they are learning or not that's not your bothering that's how people plus thinking ma'am your voice is breaking and That's you are not audible now a very bad pedagogy rather what it is is it if significant learning opportunities are capitalized on during class time during that process this could truly change learning and solve the problem so you have to have sufficient learning opportunity to be given to the students 
and you are during that class time you have to also be along with them not that you are keeping away from the class let them learn on their own that will not happen so this could truly change uh, and at least temporarily of engaging students try to engage them with, with material outside the classroom also so let them use it afterwards outside the classroom also so during the class hours class time quality class time the students must be totally engaged finally they may use the same thing also this is what Uh, that blog created by a certified blog and uh, you can refer this person chris faulkner he talk, talks about flip classroom and uh, there are many ways to flip your classroom flipping is changing modifying uh, giving innovation uh, trying your own strategies and uh, making possible uh, the best possible uh, possibilities for your learners so don't think you have to make your own videos no that's enough of making my photo my video everything but try to be along side the need of the learners there is much available now online especially at uh, i have referred to these people also khan academy and other sites these sites i think uh, ma'am has ended the session so uh, so uh, many many thanks to uh, ma'am for your delightful speech and really she have uh, uh, said uh, many things about flipped classroom flipped classroom uh, how it helps us the teachers to prioritize active learning during class time by assigning student lecture presentation to be viewed at home as well as outside and ma'am has talked about diversity technology she also talked about uh, we should encourage uh, the students and uh, teachers should be dynamic and uh, learning environment is not only for student but it is also for teachers and uh, active this flipped uh, learning is the uh, is the active learning we have to keep on changing our new methodologies and uh, and so on and we have to become the true mentors of the students and we have to monetize the students and uh, she have also talked about formal and informal sources pragmatism social justice maturity maturity of growing up with economically depressed and she have also talked about uh, how uh, in covid 19 how uh, the virtual mode of learning was helpful for each one of us so thank you ma'am for your great information and we have learned a lot from you and thank you for your gracious presence so uh, thereby i am ending up the session so thank you all and thank you ma'am